What's going on, beautiful, wonderful, great, brilliantly minded people of YouTube land? It is the main man himself, the bad wolf. All right, so in this particular video, we are going to be talking about, for those people who want to uh, do a court case on their selves, this is a guide to, as they would refer to it as pro se. Now, I personally would say pro per or uh, sui juris, meaning of one's own free will and accord. Pro se is more or less like saying you're one of them, you're uh, fluent enough in their terminology, um, and so you're doing it their way. Now, some courts, they may or may not try to fight you on it if you try to use anything but, say, pro se on the paperwork. So, you know, be aware of that. Either way, we're going to get into it. All right. So this is going to be representing yourself in a civil case, a guide for pro se litigant. Um, this comes from the United States District Court, and it is from the Eastern District of North Carolina. Now, the information based here is going to be the same for pretty much everywhere you, you go and you want to use this, but you might want to find your specific guide for your area or contact the district court, federal district court in your areas. Okay. All right. With that being said, how is everybody doing out there? Hope everybody is good. Um, the season has been kind of crazy. It's been cold, a lot of snow, lots of bills and some BS, but we are getting through it. So onward, upward, forward, and let's get going. Well, I guess before we get started, I digress. Don't forget to hit that bell and subscribe. We are jetting to 100,000 subscribers. We are at 61, about to be 62,000. We got another 35,000 who have not subscribed. So technically, we're at about 99 or 100,000 people already in normal uh, viewing. That's amazing. Don't quite have that many people in the uh, Bad Wolf group, which is the private members only group who get the inside information and inside tracks and some things. And those people are also ones who help me to, uh, well, to do this. So thank you for your monthly subscription. If you guys want to help or donate, you can also go to blacksite32.com, which is where you can find all the information. Our upcoming seminars are just now starting. So yes, we will have classes where people can uh, mock trial and go through things, learn everything I've learned about court, um, health, um, YouTube, uh, you know, lowering bill, searching for grants. We're going to have programs on uh, business credit, personal credit, all those you can find on there. We're just starting now. So we've got some VIP classes rolling out, but we will have classes for regular people. Um, also on that site, you can find out my social media pages, the real me, so you guys do not get scammed or ripped off. I will never ask you guys for money, nothing other than through uh, blacksite32.com. That is it. OK, and that's just to pay for stuff you're going to buy. But I will never be in your instant messages, your DMs or whatever else asking for money or chatting. I don't I don't have the time for it. That also being said, I'm um, going to just have to apologize and say it's been a good run with the emails, but um, I will not be answering a whole lot of emails from this point forward. Um, I've been doing that for all these years now, and I'm I'm just tired and banked on it. So you'll have to either book a consultation or uh, buy the uh, question answering option on Black Site. If you're a member of the Wolf Pack, uh, you guys still get those perks in there. But uh, in general, so if you guys do email me, uh, I may or may not answer. I've got people who are trying to just email me every day on stuff they're going through and whatever. I, I can't do it anymore. Uh, not for free, especially. Uh, I've done it for years. So for thousands of people, we've done it. So if you do message me, if it's like an opportunity or something, I might get back to you. Otherwise, in general, I may or may not answer. Don't be mad. Don't be sad. Just watch the videos, um, and I'll try to get to it that way. Or like I said, do the consultation. But uh, yeah, so I'm phasing that out a lot just because uh, it's been every day, I mean, seven days a week for since I started the channel. Boom, 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 boom. And I love giving that out there, but it takes away too much time for my friends and family and from me reading and learning new things to bring to you guys. So thoroughly watch the videos. If you guys really need it, um, let's say we'll have to do a consultation or get the questions asking option on Blackside32 on the consult page. Please read the information on the consults too. All the information there. 
Uh, other than that, if you guys have, um, you know, you guys want some of the discounts or programs, processes, videos, all on Black Slide 32, guys. Um, we've added a couple new files, so check that out. And just look around. There's going to be lots of stuff that you guys can find there. Otherwise, yes, I am on other social media pages. But make sure if you go to Black Slide 32 to add me from there, because otherwise it may not really be me. Don't want to see anybody get ripped off. And lastly, um, yeah, so otherwise everything mostly is good. Uh, I've just been busy. It took some time for me to rest and relax a little bit. So we're getting back into the swing of things, making the videos. And um, yeah, so I've seen that there's some people out there who don't like my information or how I present things on this journey of learning. And they think it's uh, cute to uh, make their little mock videos. Well, I'll tell you this, as much as I don't care for them, because um, you guys are doing, what do you guys call it? Clapping back. I'm not going to take part in that. Uh, so for all my wonderful people out there, if you guys do see videos where people are using my information or whatever else, just report them for defamation of character and slander and bullying. Well, that's what they're really doing at the end of the day. Because if you're working against me or whatever your attempts are, then you're really not for this. You're really not an American. You're really a traitor. And it, and you're operating treasonous because we're just trying to, trying to talk about the Constitution and how to move properly and privately. Do we have everything perfect? No, but no one's perfect. No one has all of it. So thank you in advance to those people who are going to report those people. And to those people, um, I'll say that's the weird part of it. Judging by the numbers, you guys are putting my name out there even more. So it's really actually kind of helping because more people are adding themselves to my channel. So it is what it is. But whatever. So that being said, I digress. Let's get going. Once again, hope you guys are having a good day. So stay positive. Without further ado, let's get into the guide. All right. And thank you to all those people who do send me the positive emails telling me thank you and how this has helped you guys and changed your life. Um, thank you in advance. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those who've already done it. All right. Let's get to it, Mr. Wolf. Let's go. All right. Lovely assistant, take it away. Representing yourself in a civil case. A guide for the pro essay. Litigant. Disclaimer. This guide is not legal advice and is not a substitute for hiring an attorney to represent you. 2 December 2023. Table of Contents Introduction, 3 Website, for definitions of common legal words, for the District, Clerk's Office, and General Court. Information, 6 Filing a Civil Case, 9 Defending a Civil Case, 14 The District's Fee Schedule, 15. Forms slash rules available at the Clerk's Offices or on the District's website, 16. Warning. Rule 11 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure prohibits you from filing a lawsuit that is clearly frivolous or filed merely to harass someone. Yeah, so don't do if that, If after people. reviewing your complaint, the court determines that you have filed a lawsuit for an improper or clearly unnecessary purpose, it may impose sanctions against you. Other rules of civil procedure allow that if you lose your case, you may be required to pay some of the costs that the winning party incurred in the lawsuit. 3 December 2023 Introduction This guide is intended to help a person who wants to file or defend a civil case in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of North Carolina, the district, without an attorney. This guide is not intended for prisoner litigation. Someone who represents herself or himself in a lawsuit is often referred to as a pro-SE party or pro-SE litigant, pronounced pro se. If you are a pro-SE litigant, this guide may aid you in understanding some of the legal words you are likely to hear as your case proceeds. It also explains basic steps in the court process and refers you to a few legal resources you may wish to consult. This guide will not answer all your questions about what you need to do to represent yourself. This guide is not legal advice and is not a substitute for an attorney. Also, you should keep in mind that this guide is not binding and that the judge may have different practices or preferences that you must follow. It is strongly recommended that you seek the assistance of a lawyer to make sure your case is properly prepared and filed. Unlike in a criminal case, the court will not provide an attorney for you simply because you cannot afford representation. 
The staff of the clerk's office, or deputy clerks, can answer general questions about procedures. They are not allowed to fill out any forms for you or to give you free copies of documents. The deputy clerks cannot give you legal advice. This means, for example, that the clerk's staff cannot do any of the following. Recommend a legal course of action or suggest ways to help you win your case, predict how or when a district or magistrate judge may decide any issue, interpret the meaning of any judicial order, interpret the law or federal or local rules, calculate response times or deadlines, or conduct legal research. The rules and procedures that a party must follow in a civil case may be difficult to understand. You should seriously consider the risks of representing yourself and the benefits of obtaining professional legal assistance. If you decide to represent yourself, you are responsible for learning about and following the federal rules of civil procedure, the local rules of practice and procedure, and the law. The court generally expects you to follow its rules and the law, even though you are not a lawyer. For December 2023 Website the district's website address is http colon slash slash www.nced.uscourts.gov slash http colon slash slash www.nced.uscourts.gov slash The website contains the federal rules of civil procedure, the local rules of practice and procedure, and other useful information. You will also find samples of all of the forms mentioned in this guide on the website. Definitions of common legal words Asterisk as defined by the Administrative Office of the United States Courts HTTP forward slash forward slash www.uscourts.gov slash common slash glossary dot ASPX HTTP forward slash forward slash www.uscourts.gov slash common slash glossary dot ASPX answer the formal written statement by a defendant in a civil case that responds to a complaint, articulating the grounds for defense. Brief a written statement submitted in a trial or appellate proceeding that explains one side's legal and factual arguments. Clerk of Court The court officer who oversees administrative functions, especially managing the flow of cases through the court. The clerk's office is often called a court's central nervous system. Complaint a written statement that begins a civil lawsuit in which the plaintiff details the claims against the defendant. Counsel legal advice, a term also used to refer to the lawyers in a case. Damages money that a defendant pays a plaintiff in a civil case if the plaintiff has won. Damages may be compensatory, for loss or injury, or punitive, to punish and deter future misconduct. Default judgment A judgment awarding a plaintiff the relief sought in the complaint because the defendant has failed to appear in court or otherwise respond to the complaint. Defendant an individual, or business, against whom a lawsuit is filed. Discovery procedures used to obtain disclosure of evidence before trial. District Judge A federal judge who is appointed under Article 3 of the Constitution. Article 3 judges are nominated by the President and confirmed by the Senate. Docket A log containing the complete history of each case in the form of brief chronological entries summarizing the court proceedings. File to place a paper in the official custody of the clerk of court to enter into the files or records of the case. Inform a pauperous in the manner of a pauper. Permission given by the court to a person to file a case without payment of the required court fees because the person cannot pay them. Interrogatories a form of discovery consisting of written questions to be answered in writing and under oath. Judgment the official decision of a court finally resolving the dispute between the parties to the lawsuit. 5 December 2023 Jurisdiction the legal authority of a court to hear and decide a certain type of case. It also is used as a synonym for venue, meaning the geographic area over which the court has territorial jurisdiction to decide cases. Lawsuit a legal action started by a plaintiff against a defendant based on a complaint that the defendant failed to perform a legal duty which resulted in harm to the plaintiff. Litigation a case, controversy, or lawsuit. 
participants, plaintiffs and defendants, in lawsuits are called litigants. Magistrate Judge A judicial officer of a district court who conducts initial proceedings in criminal cases, decides criminal misdemeanor cases, conducts many pre-trial civil and criminal matters on behalf of district judges, and decides civil cases with the consent of the parties. Moot not subject to a court ruling because the controversy has not actually arisen or has ended. Motion a request by a litigant to a judge for a decision on an issue relating to the case. Plaintiff a person or business that files a formal complaint with the court. Pleadings written statements filed with the court that describe a party's legal or factual assertions about the case. Sanction a penalty or other type of enforcement used to bring about compliance with the law or with rules and regulations. Service of process the delivery of writs or summonses to the appropriate party. Settlement parties to a lawsuit resolve their dispute without having a trial. Settlements often involve the payment of compensation by one party in at least partial satisfaction of the other party's claims, but usually do not include the admission of fault. Summary judgment a decision made on the basis of statements and evidence presented for the record without a trial. It is used when it is not necessary to resolve any factual disputes in the case. Summary judgment is granted when, on the undisputed facts in the record, one party is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. 6. December 2023 The District, Clerk's Office, and General Court Information The United States District Court for the Eastern District of North Carolina, the District, covers the 44 counties shown on this map. The district is divided into four divisions, eastern, western, northern, and southern. Court is held in six cities in the district, Elizabeth City, Fayetteville, Greenville, New Bern, Raleigh, and Wilmington. N or T here N D4 is Ion Birdie Camden Chowan Kurtuck Dare Gates Hertford Northampton Pasquatank Perkelman's TRL Washington. EASTERND4 is Ion Beaufort Carteret Craven Edgecombe Green Halifax Hyde Jones Lenore Martin Pamlico Pitt. We STERND4 Ishin Cumberland Franklin Granville Harnett Johnston Nash Vance Wake Wayne Warren Wilson. S out ERND4 is Ion Bladen Brunswick Columbus Duplin New Hanover Onslow Pender Robeson Sampson. 7 December 2023. What are the locations and business hours of the offices of the Clerk of Court? The headquarters of the Clerk of Court, Clerk, is in Raleigh. The Clerk also has staffed offices in Greenville, New Bern, and Wilmington. The Clerk's offices are open Monday through Friday, with the exception of federal holidays or by order of the Court. You may obtain complaint packets, forms, and information about procedures, fees, and rules at any staffed office and on the district's website. Greenville U.S. Courthouse 201, South Evans Street, Room 209 Greenville, North Carolina, 27858. New Bern U.S. Post Office and Courthouse 413, Middle Street, New Bern, North Carolina, 28560. Raleigh Physical Address, Terry Sanford Federal Building and Courthouse 310. New Bern Avenue, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27601. Mailing address, P.O. Box 25670, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27611. Wilmington 2, Princess Street. Wilmington, North Carolina, 28401. 252-830-6009-830 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. 252 638 85348 AM to 5 PM 919 645 1700 830 AM to 430 PM 910 815 4663 830 AM to 430 PM How do you find information about the status of your case? Most documents filed with the court are filed electronically. The clerk's office is responsible for uploading documents filed by pro-SE parties into the case management slash electronic case files, 
cm ecf system. The clerk's office maintains a record, or docket, for every case. The cm ecf system allows public access to the court's docket. You may review the docket on a public access terminal at the clerk's offices in Greenville, New Bern, Raleigh, and Wilmington. The deputy clerks may limit the time that you are allowed to use the public access terminal. Depending on their availability, clerk's office staff may help you find information about your case on the public access terminal. You may also obtain case information through the federal judiciary's public access to court electronic records, PACER. PACER is available to anyone who registers for an account at http colon slash slash www.pacer.gov http colon slash slash www.pacer.gov The clerk's office will also provide basic docket information. Over the phone How much does it cost to file a lawsuit? The filing and administrative fee for opening a civil action in any U.S. district court is $405. Payment may be made in cash, by personal check, or money order made payable to clerk, U.S. District Court. You may also pay by credit card. American Express, MasterCard, and Visa are accepted. 8 December 2023. What if you cannot afford to pay the filing fee? If you cannot afford to pay the filing fee, you may file an application to proceed in Form Apoporus, IFP Application, Form AO239. The IFP application asks you questions about your income and assets. You must follow the instructions completely, answer truthfully, and sign the application. The deputy clerk will send the IFP application, the complaint, and any other documents you submitted with the complaint to the assigned district judge or a magistrate judge. After reviewing your IFP application, the judge may deny your request. If this happens, you have 30 days to pay the filing fee. Local Civil Rule 3.2 states that your case will be closed if you do not pay the filing fee on time. The judge may also find that your IFP application is incomplete. You must follow the judge's instructions and respond within the time allowed. If the judge allows you to proceed in form apoporus, the deputy clerk will file your complaint. The judge will review your complaint to determine if it is frivolous or malicious, fails to state a claim upon which relief may be granted, or seeks relief against a defendant who is immune from such relief. This process is called a frivolity review. The judge may allow your case to proceed or dismiss some or all of your claims. What should the court papers look like? Local Civil Rule 10.1 provides the format requirements for all documents filed with the court. Below is a summary only of some of the requirements. Each document filed with the court must be on standard sized 8.5 x 11. Paper with a 1-inch margin on all sides must have a font size of 11 points or greater must contain the case number and the caption of the case must identify the title of the document, e.g., complaint, answer, motion to dismiss, must contain your original signature and date on the final page, followed by your typed or printed name, in the exact form as your signature, address, and telephone number must include a completed certificate of service. Your documents should be typed or written neatly and legibly. You should always make a copy of every document for your own records. Complaints, motions, briefs, or other documents sent to the judge or clerk of court in the form of a letter do not comply with the federal rules or local rules. 9 December 2023 All documents filed with the court are identified by a caption. When you fill out your complaint, you must list the full names of all parties to the lawsuit in the caption, the case number, the division, and the title of the document. The case number is assigned by the clerk's office upon receipt of the case opening documents. You must include the case number on all documents you file after the complaint. Local Civil Rule 40.1 C explains how to select the right division. Sample Caption 
in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of North Carolina underscore 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 division no underscore 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 a the Smith plaintiff title e.g. complaint answer or motion to dismiss v B. Jones, T. E. Johnson, Arth Thomas, and XYZ Incorporated. Defendants. Sample Certificate of Service. I certify that I have served a copy of, insert name of document, e.g. motion for an extension of time, on insert date by, insert method of service, e.g. U.S. mail or certified mail, return receipt requested, on the following, insert names of attorneys and any party who appears pro S.A. Your signature, your typed or printed name, your complete address, your telephone number. Filing a civil case. 10 December 2023. What do you need to get started? To begin your lawsuit, you must file a complaint, civil cover sheet, disclosure of corporate affiliations, financial disclosure statement, notice of self-representation, and summons. You must also submit either the filing fee or an IFP application. You should complete each of these documents before you arrive at the clerk's office. 1. Complaint The complaint explains the reason for your lawsuit. You are encouraged to type your complaint. Handwritten complaints must be legible. The district provides forms for employment discrimination, EEOC, and general complaints, as well as other documents you need to get started. You may obtain these forms at any staffed clerk's office and on the district's website. Please note that the complaint forms contain numbered paragraphs. If possible, each paragraph should cover a separate point of your case. You are required to identify all defendants by name and address, state the reasons why you believe the court has jurisdiction, the facts you believe are sufficient to support a claim against each defendant, the claim or causes of action you are bringing against each defendant, and the relief sought. If you are requesting a jury trial, you must include your request in your complaint. Each plaintiff must sign and date all documents, print her or his name, and provide a current address and telephone number. Do not list a person's social security number, taxpayer identification number, birth date, or financial account number or the name of a minor child in your complaint or any other document filed with the court. If you believe that this personal identifying information is important to your case, you should list only the last four digits of any number, the year of the individual's birth, or the initials of the minor child. You should black out, redact, any personal identifying information before filing a document. You may file your papers by delivering or mailing them to any staffed clerk's office, regardless of the division or judge to which the case is assigned. You may not file any documents by facsimile or email without approval from the court. 2. Civil Cover Sheet, Form JS44, you must submit a completed civil cover sheet and a copy for each defendant. 3. Filing fee. You must submit the $405 civil filing and administrative fee or a fully completed original application to proceed in district court without prepaying fees or costs with a copy for each defendant, Form AO 239. 11 December 2023. 4. Disclosure of corporate affiliation statement. You must submit the original disclosure to the court with a copy for each defendant. See Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 7.1 and Local Civil Rule 7.3. 5. Notice of Self-Representation You must submit a completed and signed Notice of Self-Representation if you are proceeding pro S.A. 6. Summons, Form AO 440 You must submit an original and two copies of the summons for each defendant. Upon submission, the Deputy Clerk will review your filings for completion. A computer program assigns a case number and randomly selects the district judge. 
A magistrate judge may also be designated for your case. How does the defendant learn about the lawsuit? Each defendant must be notified about the lawsuit, served with process. The case will not go forward against a defendant who has not been served. Rule 4 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure explains the steps and the time limit for securing proper service. 1. If you paid the filing fee, the clerk will sign, issue, an original summons and one copy for each defendant. The clerk retains the original summons for the court's file and returns a signed copy to you. It is your responsibility to serve each defendant properly. Improper service may result in the dismissal of your case. You may not serve the summons yourself. Rather, the summons, complaint, and financial disclosure statement may be served on each defendant as follows. Personal service by any person over the age of 18 who is not a party to the case. Certified mail, return receipt requested, by any person over the age of 18 who is not a party to the case. Service by a United States Marshal or appointed person if the court grants your request. You can also ask each defendant to waive service by sending a copy of the complaint and notice of lawsuit and request for waiver of service, Form AO-398, and a waiver of summons, Form AO-399. For the plaintiff, the benefit of waiving service is not having to pay the cost of serving the summons. A defendant who waives service is allowed extra time, 60 days, to respond to the complaint. The United States and some other parties cannot waive service. 2. If the court grants your IFP application and allows your case TO proceed, the deputy clerk will issue the summons that you prepared. Typically, the judge will direct. 12 December 2023 the clerk to forward the summons and complaint to the United States Marshal Service to serve each defendant. However, the court may require you to serve the summons and complaint. You should follow the judge's instructions. How is service perfected on the United States, its agencies, corporations, officers, or employees? You should read Rule 4, I, of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure which explains this process. 1. When the United States of America is a defendant, e.g., John Doe v. United States, you may perfect service. By either, a. Sending the summons and complaint by registered or certified mail to the attention of the civil process clerk in the United States Attorney's Office in the district where the complaint is filed, or, b. Delivering the summons and complaint to the United States Attorney for the district where the complaint is filed, and by sending the summons and complaint by registered or certified mail to the United States Attorney General in Washington, D.C. If your complaint challenges the validity of an order of an officer or agency not listed as a party to your case, you must also serve the summons and complaint on the officer or agency that issued the order by registered or certified mail. 2. When a federal officer, agency, or corporation is a defendant, e.g., John Doe v. Commissioner of Social Security, Jane Doe v. Internal Revenue Service, you may perfect service. By following the steps listed above to serve the United States Attorney and Attorney General, and by sending the summons and complaint by registered or certified mail to the federal officer, agency, or corporation named as a defendant. If you do not perfect service within 90 days from the date the complaint is filed, your case may be dismissed. Also, you must file with the clerk proof of service on each defendant. See Rule 4, L, and M of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. 13 December 2023 How do you file a motion? You may need to ask the judge to instruct the opposing party to do something connected to your case, or you may need to ask the judge to allow you to do something. When you request the court to take specific action, you do so by filing a motion with the clerk. For example, you may ask the judge to direct the defendant to give you access to certain records during the discovery phase of your case, or ask the judge to grant you an extension of time to file a document. Another example is a dispositive motion, such as a motion to dismiss, motion for summary judgment, or motion for judgment on the pleadings.
a dispositive motion may resolve an issue or end the case before trial. Some of the court's basic procedural rules for motions are contained in Local Civil Rules 6.1, 7.1, 7.2, and 10.1. Local Civil Rule 7.2 limits the length of a brief in support of a motion or in response to a motion to 30 pages. You must file a separate motion requesting leave or permission to file a longer brief. The Local Civil Rules also set deadlines for the time to respond to motions. As with all other documents filed with the court, you must provide a copy of the motion and memorandum to each party. These documents must include a certificate of service. Rule 5 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure tells you how to serve documents filed with the court after the original complaint. Motions are usually decided by the court without a hearing requiring the parties to appear before the judge. If a judge decides to hold a hearing, the clerk's office will send you a notice of the date, time, and location of the hearing. How do you receive documents filed in the case? Motions filed by other parties should be sent to you by the moving party via mail. Court orders or notices will be sent to you by mail. If you are not represented by an attorney and are not currently incarcerated, you may choose to receive documents in your civil cases electronically via a link sent by email instead of by mail. If you would like to receive documents electronically and not by mail, you must 1. Sign up for a PACER login and password and 2. Complete and sign the pro se consent and registration form to receive documents electronically. Registering to receive documents electronically does not allow you to electronically file your documents. Information on how to register for a PACER account is available at https colon slash slash www.pacer.gov slash reg underscore pacer.html https colon slash slash www.pacer.gov slash reg underscore. The Pro Se Consent and Registration Form is available at http colon slash slash www.nced.uscourts.gov or at any staffed clerk's office. What if you move while your case is pending? Local Civil Rule 83.3 requires you to provide written notice to the court of your new address within 14 days. The court may dismiss your case if you fail to file a timely change of address. 14 December 2023. How can you dismiss your lawsuit? Once you have filed your case, you must follow the court's orders and diligently pursue your action. If you change your mind and no longer would like to proceed, you may dismiss your action. Rule 41 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure explains voluntary and involuntary dismissals. Defending a Civil Case if you are served with a summons and a civil complaint, you may defend only yourself against the plaintiff's claims. Unless you are an attorney, you are not allowed to represent a corporation even if you are the owner or an officer. A corporation may only be represented by an attorney. Keep in mind that you should seriously consider obtaining professional legal assistance. The Federal Rules of Civil Procedure set a deadline for you to answer or respond to a complaint. Typically, you must file an answer or responsive motion within 21 days after being served with the summons and complaint. If you receive a request to waive service, you must return the form to the plaintiff within 30 days of the date the notice of lawsuit and request for waiver was mailed to you. If you sign the waiver of service, you are allowed 60 days from the date the plaintiff mailed the waiver to respond to the complaint. You may file your answer or responsive motion by mailing or bringing it to one of the staffed clerk's offices. Your response should include the case caption that appears on the complaint. The answer should state any defenses you have to the plaintiff's claims and admit or deny the allegations in the complaint. You should request a jury in your answer if you would like a jury trial. When you file your answer or responsive motion, you must also file a financial disclosure statement and a notice of self-representation. See Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 7.1 and Local Civil Rules 5.2 and 7.3. You must mail a copy of everything you file with the court to the plaintiff's attorney or the plaintiff, if he or she is pro se, and to any additional party.
you must attach a certificate of service to these documents. If you have been served with a summons and complaint or you were served with a complaint and agreed to waive service and you do not file an answer or other response, the plaintiff may ask the clerk of court to enter default and the court to order a default judgment against you. See Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 55. You are encouraged to read this guide completely because it contains additional information that you should know. 15 December 2023 the district's fee schedule. Effective December 1, 2023. Filing fees. Civil complaint or state court removal $405 includes a $55 administrative fee. The administrative fee does not apply to persons granted IFP status under 28 U.S.C. Section 1915 or for applications for a writ of habeas corpus. Notice of Appeal to the Court of Appeals $605, includes $5 docketing fee. Miscellaneous Case, Out of District Subpoena, Registration of Foreign Judgment, Power of Attorney. $52. Miscellaneous Fees. Photocopies made by court personnel, per page, 50 cents. Photocopies of documents printed from CM slash ECF, per page. Tape reproductions. 10 cents. $34. Record searches, per name or item searched of the district court records, $34. Retrieval of one box of records from a federal records center, national archives, or other storage location removed from the place of business of the court. Certifications, each. $70. $43 for each additional box, for electronic retrievals, $11 plus any charges assessed by the Federal Records Center, National Archive Center, or other storage location removed from the place of business of the court. $12. Exemplification of any document or page, $24. Return check fee, $53. 16 December 2023. Forms slash rules available available at the clerk's offices or on the district's website. Civil cover sheet, JS44, summons, AO440, waiver of service in form of papyrus application, AO239, complaint, general, complaint, employment discrimination, financial disclosure statement notice of self-representation rule 4 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure Pro say consent and registration form to receive documents electronically. All right, all right, that is it. That is it. So, now you guys know, this is how you move. All right. Um, and I just got off the phone with some other beautiful people like Mr. Fearless Floyd. So shot goes out to the Fearless Floyd show out there. Shot goes out to A6, grind time. Uh, finest thing walking. And uh, the pickle man himself, uh, Brandon Joe Williams. Um, so hat goes out to all you people. But uh, so it sounds like there is a lot of positive things coming your way, people. And uh, between our little network here and some other people who uh, I don't have all their names off the top, uh, we will be bringing you guys some fire stuff. So be looking for that. All right. We're about to um, about to make some history. All right. We got a lot of fire things coming. So thank you for watching the video. Um, this particular file should be on BlackSite32.com in the free documents all the way at the bottom. Um, otherwise, you can do a YouTube. Uh, Google search and should be able to find it online and I th that's about it for now guys I mean you know if you didn't know now you know so I will talk to you guys later thank you for supporting the bad wolf and we have more videos coming so thank you for supporting um truly you guys are a blessing so thank you guys uh for everything it means a lot like I said um you guys are helping me to complete a dream of mine so once again i will continue to bring you guys information and files and everything i can to help you guys out so thank you talk to you guys later enjoy your day and uh that's it for now go do something fun you deserve it <laughs>